Welcome, welcome, welcome. In today's tutorial, we will be going over how to generate figures in MATLAB. This is a extremely common requirement for any data analysis, and it's uh, easy to get it wrong, but it's also incredibly easy to generate huge amounts of decent looking figures. In my opinion, this is one of MATLAB's more powerful features, especially once you get to know it. Compared to other languages, generating figures is not only easy, but you get to kind of 90% of a beautiful figure in sort of 10% of the time that it would take in any other language. Unfortunately, it isn't perfectly suited for this, so my general experience is that for really uh, amazing figures, one normally has to move to another piece of software. But I've seen plenty of publication grade features, uh, sorry, figures produced from MATLAB. So with that in mind, let's get started going over the basics of how you generate 2D figures. In a future tutorial, I will also be going over how to generate three-dimensional figures uh, for displaying surfaces, as well as uh, other types of figures like contour plots, uh, histograms, this sort of thing. But today, we're just going to focus on plotting lines. So in our uh, uh, example window here, we need to generate some data to start with. So let's generate a series of X and Y data. For example, uh, let's generate a fairly simple uh, function, something like uh, a cubic polynomial, plus let's throw in a sine term and an offset. So really, plotting in MATLAB is just that easy. So if I uh, dock the figure, you can see we had a pretty simple plot there generated in basically no time at all. Very easy to do. Uh, and here we generated the X and Y data directly from the uh, script, but in practice we didn't need to do that. I could have loaded a CSV file or a table or uh, dropped it from a database, whatever you want. So, uh, first of all, you might not particularly like this figure. You might have thought, well, I don't really like the lines, for example. So let's go ahead and explore what you can do. The first argument is the x data, the second argument is the y data, the third argument is a formatting string. So for example, I can generate the x plot rather than the line plot. And there you go. So now we can't see the line anymore. For diffuse data like this, where you can't really see the underlying structure of the curve, this helps uh, make it clear kind of what the real scatter in the data is. So for noisy data, I prefer to use X as my marker rather than a line. However, uh, you might want to do both to give you uh, an idea of where the data really is. So in this case, we can uh, have both a line and a marker. Maybe you don't like X's. In practice, if you check out the help plot, you'll see that there's a lot of different options available. And conveniently, it's right at the end of the help description. Or actually, no, it's not. It's about halfway through. So this is a summary of all of the different types of uh, formatting parameters. So you see here we're using uh, a solid line with an X mark. But I could just as easily go to, for example, a dashed line with an O marker, and just for fun, let's make it a magenta plot. And now you can see that we've got much more uh, variety available in our data. So uh, this is all fairly straightforward to do. Uh, one of the complexities in MATLAB with figures is when you want to display more than one piece of information at once on the curve. So for example, let's say I had a second data set one given by the variables x2 and y2. So let's uh, again give ourselves a simple function to work with. For example, this time uh, still using a cubic function. Uh, so cubic plus a cosine with a different period than we had before. And now if I try plotting x2 and y2, 
I get a crash because I am bad at typing. Nope, still not there. Should be like that maybe. Where did I make a mistake? Oh, should be X2. There we go. So I've got my uh, new plot here, uh, visible on screen, and uh, it's a nice curve. You'll notice I've got more data points on it, so it's much smoother. But what if I want to display both on screen at the main at the same time? You might have thought, for example, that something like this would work. But you'll notice only one curve is visible at once if I do that. So it seems like only the red curve showed up in my figure, whereas the purple curve is missing. So what's actually happened is uh, only the latest plot is displayed. The plot function actually overwrites the axes on the figure and in doing so erases the previous one. In order to display both at the same time, we have to use the hold command. So here I'm going to turn the hold on. When I hold on, it will ensure that the figure keeps all of the axes of each plot and doesn't overwrite the data. So if I run this, you can see now I get both graphs simultaneously displayed. So this is how we display more than one piece of information on screen at once. Now that we have these two pieces of information, we might want to add some extra bells and whistles to this plot. I would say that most plots in MATLAB, if you just look at the default view, are pretty ugly actually. So what can we do to make this figure nicer? Well, the first thing I might do is add a legend. So I might, for example, indicate that the first plotted figure was x first y, and the second plotted figure was x2 first y2. And here I'm using a cell array in order to give legend uh, multiple inputs. So if we generate this, you see now I have an x versus y and an x2 versus y2 label, and because I use the same order in legend that I plotted them in, it correctly figures out, okay, the red one is x2 and the purple one is x. Okay, so all of my fonts were pretty small though. So the next thing we might want to do is adjust the font size. Actually, before we adjust the font size, let's put some labels in. So the x label was x or x2 values. The Y label was Y or Y2 values. And then the title, some plots. Let's just do it like that. So if we generate our new graph, you see here I've got a title up top, a Y axis label, and an X axis label. So now, uh, coming back to the point, we actually had a bit of uh, a small font here. So this is probably even a little hard to read on, at the YouTube resolution. So to fix that, we use a set command. And I'll explain this in a second. Set font size, or set GCA font size 14. So let's take a little look at what this is. What we're doing is we're setting a property of the current axes. So GC, the GCA command stands for get current axes, and it will grab whichever axes of a figure is available at the moment and then we're going to set the property of that axis called font size to 14 and what this will do is it will change the font size all the way through that figure at the same time and this should make it much much more visually appealing so now we see uh, a much nicer figure you can see we can uh, read the font size a little better we get all of the labels um, change simultaneously. And this is a little nicer. Actually, looking at it on screen, it's still a little bit small. So let's go ahead and let's go up to 18, say. So if we run this at 18, you can see even a little bigger now. You'll also notice that the number of values on the axes have also automatically shifted. 
So this is a, a nice feature of MATLAB. It's going to automatically adjust to whatever we do to it. Uh, so the last thing that I think we need to commonly do is make some modifications to these symbols. Now there's a lot of different modifications you make. I'm not going to go through all of them, but one in particular is incredibly useful to remember, and that is a modification of the line width. So the plot commands are uh, quite adjustable. So what I'm going to do is change the line width, for example, on one of them to 2 and on the other to 3. And what this is going to do is basically bold those lines. So here is a visualization of that, and you can see they are much thicker now. For the purposes of publishing something, you often want to make sure that when you're printing it, the line comes out clearly, or alternatively, if you have a lot of different lines, you may want to have some of them have a different line width to emphasize something. So, for example, I will often have 10 curves on screen as well as the average, so I might use a much bolder line for the average rather than uh, the same lines for all of them. Uh, and I find that the line width is a good way to distinguish different types of data on top of the use of different symbols uh, and different choices of lines and so forth. So uh, all of this together, I think we have covered the basics of how you display figures in MATLAB and how you can customize them to your needs. If uh, this uh, YouTube tutorial was useful, please feel free to hit the like button. Uh, if you have comments, uh, put them in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, if you want to see more tutorials like this, please feel free to subscribe, and uh, we should have more of them coming out all the time. Have a good day.